You want to buy land in the North Georgia mountains and you're wondering what you'll get for your money? Well, stick around and you'll find out what $5,000, $40,000, and even several hundred thousand dollars will get you. I'm Trish Rodriguez with Higher Elevations Real Estate, local Georgia real estate agent with EXP Realty. I get calls all the time from people after watching my videos that are interested in buying homes or land up here in the North Georgia mountains. I've already done a video about the home prices up here and what you can get, so if you haven't watched that already, make sure to check that one out. Today's video is all about land. Most people calling looking for land are looking for something with some privacy, maybe a little bit of acreage, and a lot want unrestricted so that they can put chickens, maybe some goats, a horse. Let's see how much land lots are going for up here. So I get a lot of phone calls about land options that are available up here in the North Georgia mountains. Uh, so today's video is gonna be all about the different land options. We're gonna take a look at some different um, acreages and the different price points that you will get in those different acreages. So the first thing, the first one that we'll start with is up to an acre. So anything up to an acre, and I'm looking at the four major counties up here in the North Georgia mountains, which is gonna be Gilmer, Fannin, Union, and Towns. That's gonna to cover the areas of LJ, Blue Ridge, Blairsville, and Young Harrison, Hiawassee. All right, so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm going directly to my website, which is patriciarodriguezga.exprealty.com. And you can do all sorts of searches from this website. You can put in a MLS number directly if you have that available to you, or you can search by an address, a city, a zip code, um, and you can also search for either homes or you can search for just land. Um, in this case, I'm going to be searching by MLS number because I already have some specific ones that I want to take a look at. Um, but the first the first thing that we're going to take a look at is anything up to an acre um, in the four counties. Uh, when I did this search initially, um, we are looking at about 371 properties that span the price range of $4,200 up to $1.65 million for one acre. <laughs> so let's take a look at the first one that we're going to see. So this first property is located in Ella J and it is listed as 0.57 acres for $5,000. Now that sounds like a really great price for a piece of land, right? Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that one, it is under an acre. So it's 0.56 acres. So of course, one of the things that you want to keep in mind with the land is going to be the layout and um, how easily buildable it is. So typically speaking, the cheaper the land is, um, the less easy you're gonna be able to build on it. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of these photos to try to give you an idea. Um, so from this first photo, you can see that it is a very sloped piece of property. And as you go through a couple more of the photos, you can see obviously that's like a big bank. So there are gonna be, some things that you're gonna to have to overcome in order to be able to actually build on this property. You're gonna to have to do a lot of grading, um, you may have to get creative you know, with the way that you build the house and things like that. That, lot, that last piece of property that we were looking at, the 0.57 for $5,000, that was located in a very popular neighborhood in LJ called Walnut Mountain. Um, and this next one that we're looking at is also in a very popular neighborhood in LJ. This neighborhood in LJ is called Kusawati. And this one is a 0.93 acres in, let's see. Yes, this one is 0.93 acres in Kusawati neighborhood for $6,500. And let's just take a look. The first one doesn't look like it's too bad. You've got some, some hilly areas there, but you can kind of see off in the shadows that it does get pretty hilly right there. And then you might be able to see that a little bit better here. So again, when you've got the cheaper property, it's going to be a lot more difficult to build on. 
the majority of the properties um, in in the under one acre range is going to be priced at um, the majority of the properties are going to be priced uh, 10,000 up to about 100,000. And uh, of course, that's going to vary in the acreage that you're getting, even though it's still under an acre um, or an acre or less. Um, and but you're also going to be varying in the kind of view that you might get. Um, and also, again, how buildable the lot is, how easily buildable the lot is. Okay, so this one is in Young Harris, which is in Towns County. It's 0.839 acres. And the very first picture that you see is of a view. So you think, oh, okay, this is gonna be one with a view, great. Um, but then when you actually start clicking more into the pictures, you can see that this is the actual lot. And the view that you saw on the first picture is a view that you get from the street. So you're likely not going to get that same view from wherever you're building your house on. In order to see that view, you have to be out on the street. So um, sometimes the pictures can get a little creative um, and they can be, um, they're not purposely deceitful, but they can be a little deceiving. If you think you are getting a view, you really have to narrow in on those pictures and take a better look to see exactly what you are getting. Okay, so this one is uh, located obviously in a neighborhood. Um, this neighborhood has, I believe, HOA fees. Um, and this one is 0.98 acres, um, so just under an acre. And it does look like it might actually have some views on the actual property. So you can see that uh, this should be, you see the little sign in the, in the yard there. So this should be the actual properties. And once you would clear some of those trees to put your house on it, you can see a little outline of uh, the mountain view that you would potentially be getting. Um, and again, this one is priced at 39,000 and it is located in Young Harris. Um, so this would be potentially a good viable option. So you can see from this angle that the slope of this one doesn't appear to be too bad. And you can see, obviously, there's another house right next door. Um, so this one might be a um, like a pretty good buildable lot that you wouldn't have to do too much to in order to be able to put a house on it. So this would probably be pretty ideal. All right. Now, this one is listed as 0.13 acres. So barely a tenth of an acre that you're getting. However, this one is an RV lot. So this is specifically um, in an RV community um, where you can come and park your RV full time or you can kind of come and go as you please. And you've got like a home base that you can leave your RV at. So that was a creek that's on the property. Um, and then this would be the pad that you would be able to put your RV on. Now, this one is priced at $89,000. Um, that is probably a pretty normal price to be in any kind of an RV uh, community up here. You're looking at probably anywhere from eighty dollars to $120,000, just depending on the community, depending on the location, um, maybe what amenities it might have. Um, but this is, you know, this is another option. So we are still on the under an acre um, or an acre or less uh, properties. And this one is priced at 99,000. Obviously the very first picture that you see, it looks like you're gonna have a beautiful view. Yeah, this one is uh, located in LJ, and it really does appear that you're gonna have uh, some really great views on this one. And from the pictures, it doesn't look like this lot would be too bad to be able to build on it. Um, your house is probably gonna be right there kind of at the street and then the remaining amount of the property will likely kind of slope down into the forestry area that's behind there. But that's a pretty great view um, and it's priced at 99,000. And that's the reason that it's priced that way because of the view that you're getting. Okay, so. Now let's talk lakefront properties. Um, anytime you have a lakefront property or a lake view property, um, you're automatically going to be at a much higher price point. So this particular property is 0.6 acres and typically are going to be a little less on the acreage as well. If you have a lot of acreage on a lakefront property, you are absolutely going to be paying a premium for that. 
So this one in particular is 0.6 acres and it is in Blairsville. So it's going to be on Lake Nautilee. And the price on this one is 199,000. Again, that's 0.6 acres, lakefront, 199,000. Okay, so this is another lakefront property. This one is actually going to be on Lake Chateau, so it's in Hiawassee. And um, this one, you're getting a little bit more acreage. Obviously, you, you could see this is a very flat piece of property, so this is going to be very easily buildable. It's also going to be very open, which means you're not going to get a lot of coverage from trees. You're not going to get a lot of coverage from um, any boat traffic that would be coming through um, or your neighbors. Uh, it's, it's pretty open here, so that could be a good thing or a bad thing. just depends on how you look at it and what you're looking for, um, but this one is 0.92 acres and it is listed at 315,000. So just, you know, again, it's, it's very open land, but a very beautiful piece of lakefront property. So if you're ever wondering why the uh, lakefront properties go for a million plus, it's because the land that it sits on is very valuable in itself. All right, so just for giggles, we're going to take a look at the highest price point um, in this category, which was 1.65 million. This is 0.98 acres on Lake Blue Ridge. And there's the price tag, 1.65 million. So this listing, all of this rock that you're seeing here, apparently this was um, however many tons of rock that was uh, brought in by the owner. Let me see, it said something about it. 230 tons of Tennessee River rock on the lake shore. So that was brought in by the owner. Um, and this will just give you an idea of the kind of view that you might have from wherever your house would be built. So, but 1.65 million for Lake Blue Ridge. Okay, so the next uh, the next category that we're going to take a look at is one to two acres, and um, you're going to open up the amount of properties that you have in this one to two acre. Uh, category, it showed about, um, there was about 475 properties available across the four counties. Okay, so this is the $8,500 lot, and this one is listed as 1.14 acres. It's in J, and it's, uh, again, it's priced at $8,500. That does not appear to be too bad in terms of slope, and again, this is just pictures, you know, you really, you really don't know what you're getting until you actually get out and walk these properties. And the other important thing to keep in mind is that you don't know what it takes to get to these properties. Um, sometimes if the property is unrestricted, or sometimes even if it is in a neighborhood, um, it might be in a neighborhood that only has gravel roads, and those gravel roads may not be very well maintained. Um, uh, we've been to a couple of houses where you are literally going up like the steep side of a mountain and it's a gravel road and there's potholes everywhere. So those kinds of things are also going to come into play when you're talking price at these different ranges of things that you're looking at. Okay, so this next one in the one to two acre category is a waterfront property. Notice I said waterfront, not lakefront. Um, this is actually on Nautily River um, and it is two acres and it's priced at $100,000. So if you want to be, if you want to have that water access um, and you're okay with not being on a major lake and you're not trying to have, you know, a boat dock and things like that, um, then something like this could be you know, a nice uh, backup plan uh, to be able to have that waterfront property and still be at a decent price point. Um, but again, this is two acres on uh, Nautily River for 100000 Okay, so this one is actually in Mineral Bluff and it is uh, 1.33 acres listed for 120000 and it does have views. So 
Again, if you're looking for something with a really great view, you're probably going to be about that $100,000 price point. That seems to be kind of where the really great views really kind of start. And then, of course, it can go up from there, uh, depending on where you're at, where it's located, the neighborhood maybe that it's in. Um, so this one appears uh, to be pretty decent. There's actually pretty level laying what may have already been graded spot right there. Um, so might be pretty easily to be buildable. And again, it's 1.33 acres for 120,000 in Mineral, Mineral Bluff, which is just outside of Blue Ridge. Okay, so here is another um, lakefront property. Uh, this one is 379,000. It is on Lake Chatoug and it is 1.07 acres. So again, you're not getting a whole lot of acreage for that price, but you're paying for the fact that it is lakefront. Um, this gives you an idea of where it is actually located on the, so the lake is down here uh, with your little access point, and then the remaining amount of the property is further back. And this one looks to be pretty, pretty level, I would say. Um, or relatively level so that you're able to get in there and potentially build a lot easier. Okay, so the next category that we're going to take a look at is two to five acres. Uh, it seems like a lot of the phone calls that I get are really kind of looking in that two to five acres. You know, you want you want some seclusion, you want some privacy, um, you may or may not want to be in a neighborhood. Um, and so that two to five acres is what a, a lot of people tend to end up asking for when they call. Um, so in this category, there's just over 300 properties available across the four counties. They start out in price at like 17,500 and go up to $850,000. And again, the majority of the lots are going to range in that like twenty to sixty thousand dollar price point. Um, but for the majority of those that are in that twenty to sixty thousand dollar price point, those are probably going to be in neighborhoods. May not be in an HOA neighborhood where you have to pay the HOA dues, but it is probably going to be in a neighborhood that has restrictive covenants. Which means if you're looking, if you're looking to be able to do uh, to have chickens or goats or anything like that on the property, uh, you're not going to be able to do that because it's going to be in some sort of restrictive covenant neighborhood that is going to have specific rules against no livestock. Um, you're also going to be limited to, uh, you know, no mobile homes, um, no RVs on the property, or if it's an RV that's on the property, it has to be like in a garage or something of that nature. Oh, and, um, and a lot of the times with the restrictive covenants, uh, you're going to be restricted to the size house, meaning you are going to have to build at least a thousand foot square foot or a thousand uh, or 1200 square foot you're going to be limited to uh you're going to have to at least build something that is this square footage or larger in inside the neighborhood okay so we're only going to take a look at a couple at this price point uh, or at this in this category and the first one here is Listed for 45,000, it's in Blairsville. It is in one of those restrictive covenant neighborhoods um, and it's listed as 2.69 acres. Um, and it, it talks about having views. You will notice that all of these pictures so far are just aerial shots. <laughs> so you're not actually seeing what the land looks like yet. There we go. Okay, so this one doesn't appear to be bad, um, but I have been in this neighborhood a few times and I've looked at a few different lots in this neighborhood. So um, what appears on the surface to be like, oh, it might be pretty good. It might be pretty level and you'd be able to build something right there pretty easily. What you can't see from the photo is that as soon as you go past that first little tree line there, it drops off. So I'm not saying that that's the case with this one in particular, but there are quite a few lots out there that will look like this. So in the picture, it will look like it is really great lot, really very buildable. But then when you get out there to take a look at the property and you start walking around, you can see that you immediately have a drop off, uh, which makes it more difficult to build on. So to my point, um, <clears throat> 
to my point, one of the things that's listed in the listing part of this particular property is the terrain. It says rolling or steep. So uh, that is pretty much going to tell you that probably the majority of this 2.69 acres is going to be pretty steep. It's going to be mountainside type property, which means you're going to have a very limited amount of property that you can actually build on or that you would want to actually build on. Um, so again, these are just things to keep in mind. When I see a uh, steep terrain, the first thing that my brain goes to is how much is it going to cost to be able to build a house on that? Because you're going to have to have a bunch of grading. You're going to have to have that extra um, sturdiness to the foundation. Um, you know, you might have your house looking like it's on stilts. <laughs> I've always been a little uh, weary of that myself. Um, and my husband even says that he would be afraid to walk in some of these houses because he'd be afraid that, you know, you hit something just right and the whole thing's going to, you know, fall like a house card. So, uh, of course, they know how to build these things properly, but, you know, it's just, just things to think about. Okay, so this one is another lakefront property. It is in Blairsville, so it's on Lake Nautilus, and it is a large amount of acreage, so it's 3.99 acres, um, which is a really, it, it says in the listing, it's a rare find. It is a rare find to have a lot of acreage on a lakefront property, um, but you can see that it is priced at 549,000. So it's obviously um, priced that way for a reason. So, and this gives you a layout of what, what it kind of looks like. So there's a boat dock that's already in place and um, you've got the area that would lead to the boat dock and then a larger area back here in the corner where it might be more ideal to build a house, I'm not sure. So there is a part of the land. Again, this is, this is part of it. Um, it's going to be kind of difficult to tell from these photos whether or not this land is easily buildable. I mean, it's it's very grown up with um, forest and brush, so it's it's kind of it's kind of difficult to tell. But it looks like it's pretty sloping in areas. Um, let's see if it says anything here. Okay, so it says on the listing that it's gentle rolling. Um, so I don't know, you won't really be able to tell again until you get out there and walk it for yourself. So, so another category that I have quite a few people calling me about when they're interested in looking for land is five to 10 acres. Um, a lot of people want that that larger acreage, they want more of that privacy. And a lot of the times when I get these phone calls, they also want unrestricted, um, which unrestricted land is a lot harder to come by. But in the five to 10 acre category, there are only 59 properties available across Fort County. So that kind of lets you know that there's just not as much uh, availability in that category. And the price points in uh, in the five to ten acres it ranges from forty nine thousand up to two and a half million. All right, and it is listed. This is the lowest price one. Oh, it's now listed at thirty nine nine. Thought it was listed at forty. Yeah, it must have just had a price reduction. <laughs> when I looked at it the other day, it was forty nine nine. So, yep, there it says price reduction right there in the corner. Um, all right, so this one I have actually seen uh, these particular lots, um, and I can tell you, let's see how many acres it is first. So it's 6.1 acres, but I can tell you from just taking a look at these lots myself that um, the 6.1 acres, a lot of it is forestry area, and it's all off the side of a mountain. So it's it's going to be more difficult to build on. Of course, there's this spot right here, but this is the spot that is right near the road. So once you get past this little brush area, it's just kind of a straight drop off. And I'm not sure if any of the pictures will show that. This is a little pond area that I believe is right across the street from these two lots, because it's actually two lots that have been put together. Um, so. Anyways, you can kind of see here in the corner right here, that is where the street is. 
And so this is the area right at the street. Um, and you're not gonna want your house like right there anyways. So, and I don't think any of the photos really show what it would look like once you get past that brush. So anyways, um, when it comes to land, land is very peculiar. You definitely have to walk the land in order to see what it is that you're getting. Um, this is definitely not something that you would ever want to purchase sight unseen. I uh, 100% do not, do not recommend anybody ever purchasing land sight unseen. Okay, so this one that we're taking a look at is an LJ. It is 10 acres, um, and it does say that it's got long range views um, and some flat mountaintop sites. Uh, so this is actually the neighbor's view with a little clearing. Um, so this would be a potential view that you might have from your lot. Uh, and then here are some of the pictures of the lot itself. Of course, it being 10 acres, you know, that's a very large amount of acreage. So there's probably, if they say that there's going to be multiple building type, uh, building sites, then, then that would be what you were looking at. Now, this one is priced at 110000 I think this one does have restrictive covenants. Yeah, okay, it does. It says privately maintained road, um, voluntary $400 a year or two. Okay, um, <laughs> the uh, neighborly contribution is appreciated. Okay, so it's not necessarily a um, mandatory HOA, but they do have a voluntary HOA where you can pay into it to help maintain the roads probably. Um, but with that being said, it is gonna have restrictive covenants, um, which means that you are gonna have to build probably you know, minimum square footage house um, and you're not gonna be, it's not gonna be unrestricted land. So you're not gonna be able to do the goats and the chickens and have a farm out there if you want to, like that's just not gonna happen. So, so as I said, a lot of the time people call that specifically want land, they are more interested in unrestricted land. So from the standpoint that if you would like to have chickens and maybe do um, a little bit of living off of the land um, and maybe have some chickens and goats or a horse or something of that nature, um, I can totally understand wanting to have the unrestricted land. Um, of course, the flip side to that is that with it being unrestricted, you're going to probably be around other unrestricted land, which means that there might be trailers on the property. Um, you know, somebody could use it as a, as a junkyard. I mean, it may not be like an official junkyard, but it can look like a junkyard because it's unrestricted. Nobody's telling them that they can't do that. Um, so that's obviously just something that you want to keep in mind when it comes to the unrestricted land. Um, I will also say that unrestricted land is a lot harder to come by. So I think between all of the different searches that we've done at the different acreages, um, and this is over four counties, we probably are looking at, I don't know, like 1500 plus properties. I, I don't know exactly how many it was, but I'm pretty sure it was in excess of 1500 properties. Um, when you're looking for unrestricted though, that number drops significantly. So most people that want unrestricted land, they want to have like two or more acres, um, so that they can spread out and do whatever it is that they want to do on the land. So when you do a search for two acres or more of unrestricted, no covenants whatsoever, you drop down to about 175 properties across the four counties. So that just kind of tells you it narrows in quite a bit the amount of properties that are available because unrestricted land is just a lot harder to come by. And these properties will range in price from 27,000 up to four and a half million. Yeah, yeah, four and a half million. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at the first one, which is the cheapest at 27,000. See what we're looking at here. Okay, it is 2.44 acres in Ellijay. It says it's in a neighborhood. 
typically when it says it's in a neighborhood, that means that it's going to have some sort of restrictive covenants on it. So that makes me wonder if this one is actually truly unrestricted or not. So I, I'm not sure it's saying that it's unrestricted, but you know, that would be something that during your due diligence, you would need to further um, investigate to see if it truly is unrestricted or if you're going to have some sort of covenants in place that will prevent you from doing the things that you want to do. And this one is not pulling up any any uh, pictures. So, <laughs> okay, so here we go. This one, this one is priced at 45,000. It's in Mineral Bluff, which is going to be just outside of Blue Ridge, and it is 3.17 acres. And this one is also listed as being unrestricted. Um, so you can get an idea of what the lay of the land kind of looks like. Uh, very obviously very wooded currently. Um, looks like it's got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a slope to it. But overall, it doesn't appear to be too bad. Um, again, sometimes the pictures can be a little deceiving, though, in that while this doesn't appear like it's too terribly sloped, when you get out there, you might find that it's a lot more sloped than it appears to be in the pictures. So, okay, so this one is actually in Talking Rock, which is right outside of LJ, and this one is priced at 70000 for 7.42 acres. Um, and this one actually, I think, appears to be a little bit more farmlandish. I don't remember. These are all aerial views. That's not really helpful. Okay, so it's a little difficult to actually see what you would be getting here because this is all aerial views and there's no there's no borders on anything to tell you what you what the land is that you would actually be getting. Um, so, you know, something like this, you definitely need to get a plat of the property and find out where the property lines are and you have to go and walk it and see if it was something that you might be interested in. Okay, so to uh, to kind of make a point here, um, this was one of two properties that came up that are in that five to 10 acre range, because I do find that a lot of times when people want that unrestricted, they want more property uh, available to them. and um, I don't know if it's because they want maybe cattle or horses or if they just want the chickens and the goats and they just want to be able to spread out and have that extra privacy. Um, but typically when people are asking for the unrestricted, they are looking like five to 10 acres. And there are only two properties that came up that were five to 10 acres unrestricted that were under $100,000. So again, that's just something to keep in mind when you are getting more acreage and you want it to be unrestricted, the price is going to go up. Okay, so this was the other lot that came up for under $100,000. Um, this one is listed at 99.9 and it is 14.25 acres. Uh, it says that it is, uh, it says that it is close proximity to uh, fishing and boating. Um, it also says waterfront, but it is likely a creek or something, let's see. Unrestricted on well-maintained gravel road with small creek located between Ella J and Blue Ridge, yep. Yeah, so again, uh, don't, get, uh, don't get fooled by waterfront. Uh, waterfront can be a lot of different things. It's not just gonna be lakefront. Um, it could be creek, it could be a branch running through the property, which is not even really a creek. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, it could be a riverfront. So this one right off of the bat, I can see that this part of the property that this picture was taken on is very, is very steep, it's very sloped. So again, while you're getting 14 acres, how much of that 14 acres is actually going to be buildable? That is the biggest question. Um, so, you know, if you truly are just looking for that extra privacy, then this might be a great, a great property. And you might be able to find a good spot where you can put your house and you might still be able to put it in a spot where you can get a view or whatever. Um, but then the, a large part of the property is not going to be buildable, which also means that if you're looking to be able to put a, um, a horse or chickens and goats, 
you may be very limited um, as to being able to do those things because the 14 acres is not like farmland. It is mountaintop property. So these are all things to keep in mind. Okay, so the last thing that I want to kind of talk through a little bit is that some of these properties, when you're looking at like lakefront or properties with a view, um, when you're in a neighborhood with these, they are typically, you know, you might find one that has two to four acres, but that two to four acres is going to be very long and narrow. So you're going to, um, and the reason for that is that if it's in a neighborhood, the developer that has done that neighborhood is trying to maximize the number of people that he can get into the neighborhood with those lake lots or with those view lots. So you're not going to have like two acres of nice spread out land where you can build your house here in the middle of it and have a nice buffer between you and your neighbors. No, it's going to be it's going to be long, narrow land, which means your house is going to be right here and your neighbors are going to be right next door to you. Um, that I've, I've gone through a neighborhood um, up here in Blairsville, and it is very much like that. Um, you're not on top of your neighbors in the sense that you could reach out your window and touch them, um, but you are going to be very close to your neighbors um, in the sense that you're not going to have that huge buffer uh, between the houses. So if you're really looking for privacy, um, you're not going to want a neighborhood like that that has the long and narrow two acres, you're going to want more of that spread out two acres. Hopefully that gave you a good idea of the land that's available and at what price points. Now something else I'd like to talk about briefly before we wrap things up is land auctions. There have been several land auctions lately up here throughout parts of Ella J, Blue Ridge, Blairsville, and parts of North Carolina. I've had several people call me before they go and check these out. And I certainly don't want to discourage anybody from checking them out, but I would like to give you some pointers of things to think about so that you can go in with eyes wide open. Now, the disclaimer is I have never personally done one of these land auctions. So everything I'm sharing today is based on research that I've done on the Better Business Bureau website and also from accounts of other people that have actually gone to these things. I've seen the postcards that come through and one was just shared with me the other day that listed three acres with lake access for $19,900. That sounds great, right? Well, first of all, lake access is not the same as lake view or lake front. And three acres for $20,000 is a really great price. So the first question that I'm gonna ask is, is this lot really that buildable? Is it gonna be easy to build on? More than likely that three acres is on the side of a mountain, which means you're gonna have a very small area that you can actually put the home, or you're gonna to have to put in a lot of extra grading and extra expense to be able to get the home on the property. Which brings me to the next point. While they have some cheap lots like that, they will also have the more desirable lots, which are gonna be a lot more expensive than that. You're gonna be probably looking at 50,000 to 100,000 as a general price range in most of these uh, type of land auctions. And those desirable lots will have the ones with a view or it will have a much better buildable lot. So the first caution that I would have is if it seems too good to be true, it likely is. The next thing I would caution is to take emotions out of it. Why do I say this? From what I've read and heard, these land auctions don't necessarily have high pressure salespeople, but they do create a high pressure sales situation by using FOMO fear of missing out. This is created because the salespeople will walk around with walkie talkies and as you are looking at the various lots that are available, you will start hearing on the walkie talkie, lot 123 sold, lot 40 sold, lot 97 sold. Now without the salesperson pressuring you at all, you have just been successfully pressured into buying the lot that you want so that you can get it before somebody else snags it away from you. So if you take emotions out of it, then you can go in with a clearer head and be able to make a smart, unhurried decision. My final word of caution is to fully read the contract and know what your rights are or lack thereof and what your obligations are for that contract. It seems silly for me to say this, right? But 99% of the time, these contracts are gonna be written in favor of the developer which means you're buying the land as is, 
and you will likely not have a due diligence period, which means that you will not be able to do your own research, you won't be able to do any tests, perk tests, or anything like that on the property to make sure that you are buying a property that you can and want to build on. The last thing you want is to sign on the dotted line, pay your 10%, which could be several thousand dollars, only to have buyer's remorse a few days later and discover that you either have to move forward in purchasing the land or forfeit the down payment that you made. Again, I have not seen these contracts for myself, but they are likely written in this way. And you want to be fully aware before you give away your hard-earned money. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to check out all my other videos all about the North. If you're looking to relocate here, please give me a call. I would love to see if I can help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.